If you want to successfully run Facebook and Google ads, one of the number one things you need to understand is how to actually optimize your ads, how to set up the ads properly, and most important, you need to see the full picture between both platforms at the same time so that you know you're spending the right amount of money in the right place again at the right time. So in this video, we're going to be going through a live audit of a completely broken ad account. I'm going to show you everything that's wrong, everything that I would do differently. And the best part is I'm not just going to show you this in Facebook, I'm going to show you the Google side as well and how the full picture will actually lift this entire brand's return on ad spend ultimately making them more profit driving them more revenue for the business and most important here while they're profiting more they are going to be scaling more this is going to be completely live all on the fly so you guys could truly see what it's like and what is going through my head in real time so first things first i just want to look at the meta account i'm just going to look at the last 30 days because we're actually looking and recording this on january 31st what i want to see here is what setup are they using where is this money even coming from and is this actually driving net new revenue to the business? The very first thing that I'm gonna do here is just look at the last 30 days. We have the full month of January, essentially here. I'm just gonna sort by spend. This is gonna tell me where has the money gone? Now, as we can see at the top here, there's an Advantage Plus campaign running at first. I actually like this. I wanna see Advantage Plus campaigns running. And in this case, this is set up quite well. We can see exactly what we want. We want website and shop. We wanna see maximized number of conversions. We have the correct commerce account, the correct data set, and the correct conversion event firing. So keep in mind, if you're watching this, you could see this as two different ways. You could see this as let me go destroy this ad account. Or if you're trying to learn, you could see this as exactly what to do and exactly what not to do. So what we have here is we have all the correct settings at the campaign level. We have our correct audience location inclusions. We have reporting set up properly, as we can see here, add to cart, site visitors, site visitors. We have existing customers set up properly, purchase all time, all set properly. Budget, $350 a day. Not a bad budget. We're spending around nine, $10,000 a month month in this campaign. That's pretty solid. Ooh, one call out here is we don't have an existing customer budget cap. I'm not going to say that this is the wrong thing to do yet, but I want to be wary of this. I want to be careful. We're going to look at this in a few moments. Everything else in this campaign looks completely fine. We'll get to the ads in a moment. Next thing is their secondary campaign is their retargeting campaign. Notice how all these campaigns have catalog at the end. So they're running mostly catalog ads. They probably don't either have the budget or the creative wits to actually build real heavy duty creative, which is going to improve the account. In the ad sets of this retargeting campaign, campaign. I love what we have here. Again, this is unique. Usually I don't love some of these setups, but I do like this setup. We have high intent, top 80%. This looks like a certain category that they drive. Then we have upsell and cross sell. I'm going to look in some of these settings because there is really only one that's driving solid conversions. Everything else is really lacking behind. Maximize conversions, purchase, cost per result goal, all good. Attribution setting is good. We have a product set for top 80% products. That's a big winner right there. We like to see that. We have a very low budget, which is completely okay for retargeting. Keep in mind, this is a small brand only driving around $20,000, $30,000. And that's over a seven day period. We have retargeting viewed or added to cart, but not purchased. I love this. This is very, very high intent. This should generally work well. And then we are excluding properly 14 day purchasers. So you might be wondering at this point, I'm saying everything looks good. Setup looks right. This is one of those points where it might not be in the setup. Sometimes the devil's in the details and we need to even dig further and further and further in accounts. Before we even look into the ads of this account, we're going to go over to the Google side. Now, don't just stop here. If you're just running Facebook or if you're just running Google, don't just watch one of these. You need to watch both. You need to digest both sides of this. Very, very important to understand the full picture because in this brand's case, I have a feeling that Google is going to be driving the majority of their purchases. So if we pull over into the Google account and we scroll down here, we see three primary campaigns running. This is all we actually need to look at here. Keep things really clean. We're spending about $325 a day in total budget. We have target return on ad spends set for 225%. This brand's target is 200% target return on ad spend. So meaning 2x, they need to spend a dollar and make $2 back. That makes them profitable. Now, in this case, over the last seven days, they've spent $2,000 over the last 30 days. They spent $9,000 in Google ads alone to drive 175 conversions to drive $25,000 in revenue. This is the profitable channel for them. Now, here's the weird part is that this channel, if we just think about profit, this channel has driven $9,000 in spend, $25,000 in revenue, $16,000 in total profit from this channel. On the Facebook side over the last 30 days, looking at all of the campaigns here again, we spent $15,000 to drive $22,000. The first thing brands say to me all the time is even though Facebook under delivers compared to Google, it's driving top of the funnel. I would totally understand that. But what I decided to do here was actually look into their third party attribution platform called Hyros. So Hyros, if you don't know, is another third party attribution tool. It's super, super 
strong. I have used Hyros for years. I use it across multiple different verticals of business. And I have to say across all the different third-party attribution tools out there, it's one that I'm just really, really comfortable with. It's one that I actually do feel confident in the data when it comes in. And in this case, I really, really was able to paint the picture of what I was looking for. When we looked at the Facebook account, we clearly saw $22,000 in revenue. When we looked at the Google account, we saw $25,000 in revenue. And we saw that both platforms were performing okay. We saw Facebook at a 1.4. We need to get that up to a two. We saw Google at a 2.8 and that only needs to be at a two. So it was actually overperforming. But when we actually looked at the actual client's revenue for the period of time, so I'm going to actually just look at the last seven days just to keep this really, really simple. We saw that $5,000 was generated from Google. We see that $4,300 was generated from Facebook. We see that almost all of the brand's revenue came from these two sources. That's a little concerning considering I know that they have about 30% repeat purchase rates. That threw me off. I need everyone to keep this in mind. What the platforms tell us is not always 100% true. There are ways to navigate this, but what I wanted to do here is really look into Hyros, look into this third-party attribution tool, which has no influence on what Facebook says and what Google says. They're going to give us what is most accurate based on pure click-based data. So here's what I wanted to look at. Over the last seven days, this business drove $7,900 in revenue. They spent $4,800 in total cost. That puts them really close to a two return on ad spend, but not quite at a two. And then and just looking at their sources, this is using first click data. And don't worry, we're going to actually get into a report in a second. We can see that Google drove $3,000 in revenue, which is quite close to the 5,000 that they say, but still off by about 30 to 40%. Then we can see Facebook has only driven $780 in revenue. That very clearly means to me, Facebook is the missing piece to this puzzle. Facebook is what needs to get solved, but Google needs to be spent on more. So one of the very first things that you need to do when you're thinking about your advertising is simply where should the money go? Forget the complicated setups. And yeah, I'm going to show you them. We talk about complicated setups here all the time. Focus on the top, 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 which is where should the money go first? Should it go into Facebook ads? Should it go into Google ads? Should you be spending more in different places or should you be aggregating your spend into one single ad platform? So in this case, we can clearly see Google's a winner. And what I want to do further is actually look at the reports. If you've ever used third-party attribution before, you've probably seen these different performance reports before, but I want to break them down just very, very quickly for you because each tells a little bit of a different story. We have a last click reporting, which literally just takes the last click in the event. So if I go and I click 20 different Google ads, but the last thing I did was click a meta ad, the last click is going to get all of the conversion data. We also have first click, which literally just takes the first time that this customer clicked on an ad and got to your site and everything else doesn't matter. Then we have scientific deprecation and linear fractional are essentially just ways to give different and equal distribution based on where the customer is in their journey. In most cases, all we actually need to focus on is the first click report and the last click report. Everything else paints a little bit of a better picture if you know your brand exactly and you know your customer journey exactly. But the first click is gonna tell us what is driving top of funnel. The last click is gonna tell us what is driving the final, final, final bottom of the funnel. We're gonna start with our first click report. So all I'm doing here is I'm clicking create report, first click, and I'm just gonna look, like I said, at the last seven days. We're gonna keep this really small and generate a new report. Good thing about Hyros, it's super fast. So really happy the client is using this. So we could see right off the top, we have 5,500 in revenue, 4,800 in cost. That's not where we need to be. The good news is just looking at revenue, things have seemed to pick up in the last three days here. So, you know, maybe there was something going on that I'm not aware of for the first four days of this week, but nice little pickup. We've seen some balance in the last few days. And then this is what I absolutely wanted to see. This is where one of the most important columns that you could possibly have in a third-party attribution tool, report versus revenue. Now you can see very clearly we are over reporting in meta and over reporting in Google. I expect over reporting. I just want to be clear on that. We don't expect this to be perfect. It generally should over report because it's not capturing any view through data, but the delta that it's over reporting is very, very important. You remember here when we looked at the Facebook ad account, we had a rough return on ad spend of 1.59, call it 1.6. When we look down here, that row has turned as 0.35. That's a fact of literally five to six times worse. That's a huge delta. That tells me there's something wrong in this account's Facebook ads. On the Google side, however, we had a 1.4 return on ad spend. And again, looking at the last seven days, this was at a 2.36. So we had under a 50%, more like a 40, 35% reduction. To me, this tells me even more clearly, even more obviously that we still need to optimize on the Google side to improve the return on ad spend, but we need to spend more in Google and we need to really re 
Orient Facebook. So here's where we're going to break down exactly how I would set things up, the exact structure, the exact graduation system, and literally everything that you're going to need to know to fix your account, especially if it's broken like this. So when you're doing this analysis, make sure you are looking at some sort of third party attribution tool. We'll put a link to Hyros down in the description below. I know they have some affiliate programs too. So they'll probably hook us up in some good way. If you don't use Hyros, just use a third party attribution tool that you trust. In this case, Hyros really painted the picture for me. That's all I really needed to see. It's going to tell me very clearly where that money needs to go. Just so I'm clear, we could be looking at first click. We could be looking at last click. I went through these, as you can see through my, all my recent reports that I scheduled out here. I went through these over the last day. So I know exactly what I was looking for. I knew that the first click and the last click were going to look significantly worse. If we pop back over to the meta ads platform, we need to talk about a new setup. We need to reinvent this setup to actually allow it to win. And what I'm going to notice right off the bat here is that they are heavy catalog. So in the best case scenario, this brand could develop new creative. This brand can make reels. They can make stories. They can make video and they can make statics. And I'm going to actually come from this at the standpoint of we cannot create any new creative. So we're just talking about system and structure. So what we would want to do here is we want to work this into our graduation system. So what does this actually mean for this brand? What this means is that they need to create a scalable system that is predictable and repeatable. What we're going to be doing here is we're going to want to start with a prospecting CBO campaign. That's what we have right here. This prospecting CBO campaign is going to be the core of the account. Every time you launch new ads, they go into new broad packs. I don't care if you have four ads, two ads, five ads, nine ads. It doesn't matter. Just launch them into new ad sets. And we call these packs or just bunches of creative. I highly recommend you launch these broad and you date them. The reason you want to date them is because you don't want to look at them too early and you don't want to make irrational decisions in your optimization process. So keep in mind when you're making these changes, you need a surefire amount of data, whether you're using a third party tool or you're just using the first party Facebook data, make sure you have adequate data, at least 14 to 28 days of data. So we want to date these. Once we create our broad packs, again, it might just be one. And then when you have another round of creative, you create the second. So for this brand, we're going to want to create that prospecting campaign. We're going to use the first round of catalog. And then in two weeks, we're going to be launching the second round of catalog. Once we have some learnings from this first round. Now, what that's actually going to look like in practice is we're going to take what is the top performers and we're going to make more variations of those. And we're going to implement them into the next pack. It might be two variations. It might be five variations. It might be nine variations because they're running catalog. It's going to be around products, copy overlays, and backgrounds. Really simple. We could also test some things like slideshows versus carousels versus single images versus collections. Cause those are the only options we have when it comes to catalog. Now you might ask what the heck is this giant winners thing going on here? Now I've broken this down in other videos, but I want to show you exactly how it works for this unique case. When we have our top performing creatives, we take simply the top 10% of ads. We're not overcomplicating this. We're not just picking and choosing ads that we think are good, that we think should scale. We're taking the top proven ads only, and we are graduating them into what we call the winner's bucket. So you can see these one, two, and three are being graduated into the winner's bucket. From the winner's bucket, they actually move into an advantage plus shopping campaign at the top and then interest down below, which I'll show you in a second. So what we are doing is we are identifying our top 10% of creatives. Those are going to be identified by the top spenders plus above your target return on ad spend. We're then taking those, we're pushing these into a winner's bucket. This is literally just a box. It doesn't mean anything. And then we are graduating those in the bucket up to our advantage plus shopping campaign. This is going to be a 100% broad advantage plus shopping campaign with only your winning proven creatives. This is the best of the best. Additionally, we're taking these winners and we are launching interest based campaigns. This is different than what most people like to do these days. Everyone likes to run full broad. I don't, I like to be a little bit different. Interest are single interest. This is very, very different than what most people do. Most people stack a bunch of interest. Let's say you're a shoe brand. Most people would say Nike, Adidas, Under Armour, name all the different shoe brands out there and they'd stack them all as different interests and that would be your group and you'd wind up with 300 million people that you can target in the United States, aka it's a broad campaign. What we like to do is use single interest ad sets. Single interest ad sets have one single interest. So in this case, it would be Nike alone. If that interest works, create a second interest. Don't start doubling down on interest groups. Over time, you're going to know what interest works and what interests don't work. And you're just going to keep a nice log of that. It's not too complicated. It just takes a little bit of diligence and effort. The graduation process goes into these interest groups because interests don't scale as much, but they improve your return on ad spend. So when you combine interest with broad packs, you will generally see improved return on ad spend. So that's exactly what we're doing here. Down at the 
the bottom for this account, we saw a really good retargeting actually done already. So we're not going to do anything different in the retargeting side, but just to quickly show you and understand what we'd like to generally do. We have a retargeting campaign with 14 day Facebook and Instagram engagers, 30 day site visitors to retarget, and then 90 day add to cart slash initiate checkout. Anyone who's added products to the cart, we want to retarget them with those same products for at least a short period of time. And then for the ads in this case, evergreen ads, objection ads, sale ads, intros, offers, super, super important. We already saw downsell and upsell in this campaign that we were just auditing product focus ads, and then general retargeting focus ads, something that is addressing the audience directly. And then finally, the retention based campaign, it's going to have all time purchasers and 180 day purchasers. This is just going to make sure that we cover our bases so that we're not letting customers drop off and forget about us. We need to make sure we are top of mind all the time, even if that just means spending five to 10 bucks a day. In this case is brands only spending $10,000 a month or $15,000 a month. Not a problem. Let's just spend five, 10, 15, $20 a day. Really, really small, just so we can keep top of mind with anyone who's ever purchased from us in the past. Okay, so that's the exact Facebook setup that I would run for the brand that I just broke down for you in the first half. That setup is going to take time to implement. It's going to take time to get better because this graduation process that we're breaking down here, it does not happen overnight. You have to wait weeks and weeks and weeks to actually graduate the best performing ads into the scaling mechanism over and over and over again. So steadily over time, your ad spend is spending most of its cash on the best performing ads and a very, very, very little amount of cash on new tests. So you minimize your overall wasted spend. So finally, we need to talk about the Google side. I think this Google setup is phenomenal. We have $100 plus products. So any product over $100, we have products from 65 to 100, which is another breakdown of this brand's product set. And then we have a brand core campaign. If you're only spending $2,000 a week, right? They're spending, what is that? Around 300 bucks a day in Google. We're not going to get beyond this. Some people would want to launch standard shopping campaigns, search campaigns at 300 bucks a day. It's way more important for us to keep things consolidated. When I look at this campaign on a seven day, and even if I pulled to a 30 day, we could see very clearly this return on ad spend is good. It's above their target. And even when we looked in high rows, it was at, or really at the standard that they needed it to perform. So what I'd actually want to do here, I'd want to actually spend more here. I know it sounds a little too simple sometimes, but sometimes the answer is that simple. Sometimes it is as simple as just turn the budgets up slightly. The best part about this is in this case of this brand, you could see they're actually limited by budget. So we're just going to click on the limited by budget tab and they're going to give us a little bit of a forecast. We're currently at 250, which you can see here. And according to Google, if we increase our daily budget from 250 to 320, we're going to see a drop in return on ad spend by 0.22. We're expected to drive weekly $500 more and increase our cost by $481 more. That is actually not what we want. We don't want basically a one return on ad spend because this campaign is currently getting us a 2.57. So we're going to take a look at the next limited by budget here. And we can see again here, they're showing us this in a little bit of a different way, but we're going to see a weekly conversion value really simply of increasing by 60 bucks and weekly cost increasing by 80 bucks. Again, that's a loss for us. We don't actually want that. That's incrementally a loss for the brand. So instead, what we're going to be doing, we're just going to inflate our target return on ad spends by a small amount. I can't actually make changes here, but this is what I would prefer to do. Instead of just smashing through higher budgets or just smashing higher return on ad spends, we're just going to inflate our target return on ad spend by 10 to 15%. We're going to allow that to sit for seven to 10 days, maybe five to seven days, depending on how much the spend actually inflates. And then we're going to reassess, potentially uptick the budgets from there because we're overperforming against our goal. So all we need to do is make small incremental changes. We are not making sweeping changes on the Google side. Overall, I think if this brand were A, to either work with us at the Moonlighters or really just get better hands-on service from someone, I think that they'd be able to see somewhere in the tune of a 20 to 40% increase in return on ad spend just by implementing a better structure. Not to mention, if they get better creative briefs in place and get better creative static video, et cetera, I think they'll see a tremendous increase in output. Spending the right amount of money at the right time in the right place and platform is massively important and tremendously undervalued in the market today. So as you're going through your ad accounts this weekend, today, whatever, just keep in mind the fundamentals. Spend money when you're most likely to make money. If you got value out of this video, please let me know in the comments below. And if you think you're a fit to actually work with us, if you're spending a lot in Facebook ads, if you're trying to grow your business, go to the moonlighters.com to apply to work with us today. And I'll see you all in the next one.